Okay, everything that you just watched was done with my new Super 8 Power Grade, and I'm really excited because it's so easy to use. It's basically just one click, and in this video, we're gonna go through everything, how to install it, how to use it, all that good stuff. So, let's get started. When you unzip the folder, this is everything inside. We got some Super 8 burns that are just MOV files, as well as some sound effects here to bring cohesion to everything, and then some 4x3 assets as well. But the main thing that we're gonna be looking at is the power grade. So, let's dive into DaVinci. And the first thing that we wanna do is navigate to your media pool. So once you're in your media pool, which is the first page, I'm just gonna drag this Super 8 Power Grade folder over into the media pool, so we'll just quickly navigate. And I'm gonna right click, show you here, the frame, and we're gonna click Add to Media Pool as Matt. This needs to be the first step that you do, and I'm just gonna drag that in my Assets folder. So once you've done that, let's slide over into the color page, and once you're in the color page, let's navigate up to Gallery, and let's make a new Power Grade album unless you have one that you want to add to. And the reason I'm not going to put it into stills is because that'll only work for the current project. But if you make a power grade album, every time you open DaVinci in any project, you'll be able to access it. So let's add a new power grade album and call it Super 8. So now I'm going to navigate back to the folder where we saved it and you can just drag one of these files right in and that's it. Okay, so let's take a look at the node tree that was just applied. So I've designed this in a way that it can kind of be used in a few different ways so it can be uh, versatile. So the way I'm gonna go through right now is just applying it to an actual clip, but you can also apply it to an adjustment clip. And depending on which way you use it, there's a few things that you need to know. So first off, if you're using it just on a regular clip, you can turn on this node which is dropping the frames. But if you're using it on an adjustment clip, it has to be off. And the other difference here is this position node right here with the arrow. So if you're using it on a clip by clip basis, you're gonna use this to actually change the position and scaling of your clip. Those are the two major differences. If you're using this on an adjustment clip, I'll show you how to do these things in just a minute. So I've deactivated everything so you can see exactly what's happening. This is the regular smooth footage, and then I'm dropping frames, and this is only dropping two of those frames. If I drop three, you can see it's even a little bit more choppy. Two, three, four, that's what I would suggest. The weave node is gonna add a little bit of that film jitter. So these next three nodes are basically just like space for you to color grade, make some primary adjustments and some secondaries. So next up, we got the CST. So I've left two ways here because I know, at least for myself, I default a lot to just using Rec. 709 LUTs. I love the Phantom LUTs, and that's pretty much what I use 99% of the time. I've also left space that you can just use a color space transform. So for this footage, I used Sony, and then my output right now is actually Rec. 709A. So this would just be our Rec. 709 image. And again, like I mentioned, if you're using it, you can position the frame however you want. So this next one is not for you to touch. It's actually the node that's making basically the mirrors on the edges to actually be able to use the frame. So let's activate the frame here and you can see what I'm talking about. So above and below to really sell the overscan look, this node is needed. So yeah, please don't touch that one. Next up, we have our film emulation, so it's converting into Cineon and then coming back with a Kodak print. If you dive in here, you actually have some adjustments that you can make. So obviously this is a warmer 2383 and then this is the cooler Fuji print and this is Kodak. So today I think we're gonna go with Kodak and this node is just outputting to Cineon to actually use the most out of those LUTs. So you can see it still pretty much looks like digital footage, but the rest of these nodes basically really push it all the way over it to actually make it look like Super 8. So you'll need to be running the studio version of Resolve to use this. We got a, uh, we got a halation node, we got a blur node, because Super 8 footage isn't actually sharp, but you can dial this up or down to your desired look. And then we have the grain, mimicking Super 8 grain, and then I sharpen everything up because I feel, because in my personal experience, when you sharpen on export, it actually comes across way better on 
social media and YouTube and all those kinds of things. So that's what this is for. It's kind of for, for like the after export. So it actually looks like it does in Resolve. Yeah, that's super simple. I've literally made no adjustments in terms of color and that's before and that's after. This pretty much works on every single camera. Uh, if you jump over here, this is literally just like a camcorder clip. Works very similar, so I'll apply the exact same grade. Okay, so I've just applied it. Obviously it's too heavy because it, the CST is telling it that's S-Log3, which it's not. And because it's camcorder, it's already looking super blurry. So we can probably dial this back down to like 1.5. So to me, this actually looks like pretty true to real Super 8 footage, which is cool. So there we go, that's it. The Super 8 on a camcorder, super simple. So let's go back here. This is the montage I made for the beginning. And for all these clips, I actually just used an adjustment layer and I applied the power grade to the adjustment clip. So if I turn this on, it's just the actual footage. And because I shot it all with the same camera, I can just leave on my CST in there. And the benefit of this is I actually can make individual adjustments on each clip in the color page if I wanted to. And I can also restructure these outside in the edit page if I wanted to move them around or scale them up. And everything will work as it should still with the power grade. The only thing that doesn't work out here is the frame drop. So if you're using it on an adjustment clip, you should leave it off because it might not work as it should and it'll just like make black frames essentially. So my suggestion basically is finishing your edit, making a new compound clip and then looking for stop motion in open effects and then applying that there. And that is exactly how I made the intro. So you can also use this on vertical clips as well. If you're interested, I have a little walkthrough on my channel. There is a few things that I would do in camera to kind of sell your Super 8 footage a little bit more. So let's cover that now. The first tip I would recommend is having everything in focus. This is a dead giveaway that footage was shot on Super 8 when there's no depth of field. So stop that lens down all the way to 5.6 or higher. Okay, tip number two is zooming mid-take. If you got a zoom lens, use it. A really classic trait of Super 8 cameras is just zooming mid-take because a lot of them had zoom throttles actually on the camera. The last tip I'll mention is don't use slow motion. This effect won't look good if you're using 60 frames a second. Super 8 footage usually plays back at 18 frames a second and our cameras nowadays shoot 24. So use 24 and run that and everything will be all right. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you want to download this pack, just head to the description. And while you're down there, maybe you can hit the subscribe button too, because it means a lot to me. So that's it. I'll see you next one. Bye-bye.